the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So preserved ejection fraction is like when do we use this? When the ejection fraction of the individual is like more than 50%. So usually the value is 55 to 70% but still even more than 50% also we take it as the preserved ejection fraction. So now there were many trials which have been found the usage of neurohormonal antagonist right many trials which have been found the usage of the neurohormonal antagonist in case of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction but all these trials right they have shown that the neurohormonal antagonist right they don't decrease the mortality right they don't decrease the mortality that is what has been seen in case of the HFPEF about neurohormonal antagonists okay then what is the treatment then you are not able to I mean beta blockers there is no mortality benefit ACE inhibitors or ARBs no mortality benefit aldosterone antagonists no mortality benefit neprilize inhibitors no mortality benefit then what are the options that we have in HFPEF the options that we have in HFPEF is number one it is only specific treatment, symptomatic treatment that only works in case of HFPEF. One is the control of congestion. So controlling of the congestion that is being done by your loop diuretics and particularly what we use is we need to give the furosemide. Okay. And stabilization of the heart rhythm. Because why stabilization of heart rhythm is very very important is these patients with HFPEF there is chance that they develop atrial fibrillation. And you know, once the individual develops atrial fibrillation in case of HFPEF, the progression is going to be worst. And there is also thromboembolic events. So that is the reason why you need to stabilize the heart rhythm. Okay. The stabilization of the heart rhythm, you can give the antiarrhythmic drugs or we give the beta blockers. Right. Preferably what we give is the beta blockers because that will be useful for both rate control and as well as even rhythm control. Then controlling of the blood pressure is very important why because if the blood pressure is on the higher side that will increase the afterload on the heart so how can you achieve the control of the blood pressure that is by giving the ac inhibitors or the angiotensin receptor blockers or you can also give the aldosterone antagonist or you can give nitroglycerin or you can give even the loop diuretics and finally, management of the comorbidities, right? So what are those comorbidities that you need to manage? So the comorbidities that we need to manage here is, if suppose, if the individual is obese, right? You should ask the individual to cut down the weight because otherwise obesity is one scenario where there is increased afterload on the heart. So obesity has to be cut down. And if the individual is having the obstructive lung diseases like COPD and as well as the bronchial asthma. You treat them otherwise the individual will develop corporal nail and there will be precipitation of the underlying heart failure. And you also need to treat the obstructive sleep apnea with the help of your non-invasive ventilation that is your BiPAP or your CPAP okay right that is your obstructive sleep apnea. And next thing is you need to also treat the diabetes mellitus or if there is associated insulin resistance in the individual because of obesity even that also has to be treated and this insulin resistance it is being treated the drug of choice will be metformin right drug of choice will be metformin and you also need to treat if there is any underlying anemia and this anemia this will be iron deficiency anemia that has to be treated and finally you also need to treat if there is any CKD because CKD will cause the fluid overload and once the CKD cause the fluid overload you know there will be precipitation of the underlying heart failure. So management of comorbidities in case of HFPEF is very very important part of the treatment. Now let me tell you so I said you that these many trials have been done and many of these trials they found there is no role of the neurohormonal antagonist. Now let me just quickly tell you what are those clinical trials because in the exam they'll be giving you the trial name and they'll ask you like which particular drug has been used for in this trial or what is the end result of this particular trial. So there can be some questions on that. So the trials which have been done for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is 
we have the charm trial in which the candy sartan was used. So C for C, C for candy sartan. Next is I preserve trial. So what has been used? That is Irbi sartan was used. I'll tell you in detail about these trials. But let me just give you the names of the trials which have been done for HFPF. And all these trials have shown that there is no role of your neurohormonal antagonist. All right. Now, then PEP CHF, right? That is, in this trial, the perindopril was used in order to look for the mortality benefit. DIG, ancillary trials, digoxin was used in this. Seniors trial, in this beta blocker, that is nebivilol was used. Topac trial, in this, the aldosterone antagonist, that is spironolactone was used. Then Aldo DHF study, that is spironolactone was used. Spirit HFPF trial, that is, your spironolactone is used. So spironolactone trials, we have totally three trials. One is Topac trial, the other one is Aldo DHF trial, and the other one is Spirit HF, uh, HFPF trial, okay? 